Hello and welcome back to another video and another race day. We are back racing cyclocross today. It has been a while since I've said that. Obviously you're thinking, it's the middle of summer, it's not winter. What are you doing? It's summer cyclocross. All the joys of cross without getting caked in mud. And most importantly, not having to run. <laughs> yeah, boy. But I'm just spinning over there now for two reasons. One, to get a bit of extra training in. And two, I haven't been feeling 100% today, like a bit headachy. So I just wanted to see how the body feels before I go full absolute numpty and whether I should actually do it. But we'll see when we get over there. Here we go then, race time, and we have got race footage. So you can see the exact moment I blow up big time but this guy here absolutely nuked it off the start I missed my pedal and I thought here we go we're back racing cross absolutely borrowing full gas from the start you got I was just a bit ropey where I haven't practiced clipping in in ages been on the road bike and I was like wow here we go but I was feeling terrible and just here he took a wide line so I was like I'm gonna go up the inside go to the front give it beans, see what I've got and see when I blow up. So I went to the front, gave it the berry. So I'll play this full first lap so that you can see when my world explodes. But coming down here, you can see what the course is like. It's grassy, your typical like summer cross course, a couple of little sharp banks and stuff and a few twisty corners. This event's ran by uh, Sprocket Cycle Club and Eventrex. So if you want to have a go at cross, it doesn't matter if you've got a cross bike, mountain bike, just jump in. They're absolutely mega fun. And to be honest, the best thing about cross is because everyone just goes off, just goes as hard as they can. You get in your own little battles through the race and you don't have to be at the front to have a good race and enjoy it. You can be absolutely anywhere. But I am at the front here and I'm feeling like, you know, when you're looking down at your legs and you're like... I've got a couple of bits of string dangling out some lycra and coming up this little drag here it's into a headwind it's absolutely honking it was horrible and my legs were just giving me nothing and I was like I, I came down ill and I knew I was ill but I just wanted to race cross so I tried to give it everything I had I got to the top of this climb and then the rider that was in second place behind me up there come past me. I think it's just here. And that is Paul Lloyd. And he's a bit of an animal. Like the guy's like one of the top cyclocross riders in the vet category. So I'm like, just jump on his wheel, do whatever you can, to stay with him. But I was like, every time he put the power down, I was looking down at my legs like, come on, you noodles, do something. And it was just putting me in a serious hole. I've only got, obviously, heart rate, speed and duration up there. I don't have a power meter on this bike. I could adjust some things and get a power meter, switch pedals over, which I might do in another round. But to give you an idea, my max heart rate when i done the talk 12 mountain bike thing got up to like 190 through the lap and i'm only at 169 here so i've technically got like another 20 beats but you know when your legs just you, your body's just empty you can't do anything about it and at the moment he keeps gapping me and i'm relying on trying to get back on the corners just making up time on the corners and it shows how much time you can make up on a corner if you're like half decent and I think you can see here it's a bit confusing this bit where the, the sun was coming down you couldn't see the tape very well so you could see Paul went to like turn in turn in I don't think he knew where the turn is so because of that I managed to get back on but I knew that as soon as it got to like a flat straight section again he was just going to give it the ponies and absolutely bury me so I was just clinging on and slowly, slowly dying at this point. But coming in, this was, this is like the end of lap one. It's about a four minute lap roughly. And we're racing for just over 40 minutes, I think it was. So coming round, start, finish straight. I'm still there. I'm as surprised as any man that I am still there because my legs are shocking. But Luke's come past and at this point, I knew it was game over for me. They were just going to pull away. And there, there was nothing I could do today. It was one of them days. The legs weren't firing. And I was trying to give it everything I had. But on these little straight flat sections, I, 
I just had no power to put down. So they start pulling away. And then for a little bit, I'm in like no man's land. I'm off the back of these two. The guys behind me are a little bit further back. So I was just, I was literally just peddling round trying to survive. You saw how wide I took that there. And then about half a lap later, I got caught up and we were in a group of three now battling for third. So you can see the first guy come past and I was like, just jump on, stay with ease, get a good session in now. And like, I was never gonna gonna win, but you know, you always feel like it. So this was the three of us here. And these two were putting me in the hurt locker as well. But I was like, just stay there, stay there. And you know, this is what's good. You can get in these little battles and, and you're like, you're racing each other. It's mega. It's absolutely mega getting to just go wheel to wheel, take people on the corners and stuff. And that's the best bit about it, about cross. Just get involved, get it done. But the one nice thing about being in this group was when we got round to this draggy section now... I was able to get in the slipstream and I know it's not as big with um, cyclocross as road because we're not going as fast but up this in the headwind it was mad but for some reason just like what are we like 10 minutes in I got second wind for some reason I think I recovered from that balls out start and then I thought I'll go to the front again get some beans see what I've got because I'd recovered a bit. I mean, my legs still felt terrible, but I was feeling quite good on the corners and cornering quite well, which was, was nice. It's not always about legs. So I just gave it the beans for a bit, and I managed to get a bit of a, a bit of a gap on them, actually, up these little little climbs. They're quite good for me. I like just powering up them. But I think it was about half a lap later, coming round this corner, you can see just on the left, I didn't know, just on the left, I'd opened up a little bit of a gap. So I was like, I might as well just keep giving it what I've got and try try and fight for third place now. But, God, they could have mown this lawn. Come on, Sprockets, mow the lawn. It was bloody painful cycling through this grass. It was killing the legs. So anyway through the twisty section you could see them just over and I was having a nightmare with this course I'm not gonna lie I think it was the low light and just my head wasn't in the right place but I'd done this about two or three times look just here I took the corner before the corner was even there and almost went straight through the tape I was like my old man he's always going through the tape that is like me I just my head was all over the place bad headache but anyway about a lap later I was caught and over I was happy to let him go past me here. So I was caught by someone else now. I was happy to let them go past me because I knew that in a second it was going to be this headwind straight. And I'm a lazy git, as everyone is. So I thought, you know what, if he goes past me, I can jump on the wheel and get a little toe up there. And to be honest, I thought it was going to be easier than it was. But he put me deep in the hurt locker. I was a shell by the top of this this climb I'm like looking down at the noodle legs come on come on and then he actually opens up a gap and I was sort of thinking I could rely on my corner in a bit to close down the gap but you can see it's just opening opening and you can't let a gap like that open no matter how good your cornering is you can't let a gap like that open. That's that's game over when that happens. But you can see just through these corners, I start making up some time closing down the gap. But I didn't realise until after this just how far off the back I was. So coming round this corner up the sharp little climb, you can see he's at the top there. For During the race, I felt like I was like glued to his wheel but then when you actually see the footage after and see how far behind you are just here and then same again he was super strong up this draggy section and I wasn't getting any benefit of the draft now so he kept putting it in but I was just kept chipping away chipping away just hanging in there basically trying to close the gap down because I thought if I do close the gap down I might have a chance of getting third place back so I worked my absolute backside off and then a lap or so later, I don't know how, but I did manage to close the gap down. I don't know if I was going fast or if he had a problem or what, but I was back on and we were back battling for third place. 
after. But I mean, I wasn't hopeful that I was going to get third because I was an absolute shell of a man at this point. So really, the next couple of laps was just me clinging on for dear life to his back wheel and trying to get any benefit of any draft in headwinds and stuff like that and just surviving. So like you can see up here, I'm absolutely glued to his wheel here trying to trying to get in the draft and then a little bit further on I'm still there we're coming around these corners and I do overlap a bit here and accidentally touch his wheel but you know what they say just there if you ain't rubbing you ain't racing son but no that is a complete accident and I'm gonna say this next bit and bit is an accident but he won't believe me here coming into this corner I don't want to be on the front I'm an absolute shell but I think I thought the uh, the track went straight for a bit. I just forgot to break and completely chopped him. That was an accident. But then he does completely chop me again on the next corner. So now I'm like, here we go. It's race time. It's fair game. I don't think he liked it. That's how I like to race. I'm like the Max Verstappen of cyclocross. I will chop you. No, I'm joking. I genuinely forgot to break then. I thought the uh, straight was going to go on. So I just locked up. But then we're on the final lap now and we're coming up this drag. He's putting a hurt on me and I know now I don't want to go to a sprint finish because my legs are wrecked. So, you know, you've just seen me chop him on that second to last corner. Yes, I'm going to try and do it again because I don't want to go into a sprint and that's the only place to overtake. Look how tight and twisty this section is now. I don't think he liked it. But I'm going to say this move was fair game. You can disagree with me in the comments down below. But I'm saying there was space. And I completely Max verstappen it. And I took that space just here up the inside. I'd say that is fair game. A great little move. I'll get it from another angle now. But I paid for it anyway. Because look, last corner went down like a sack of potatoes. <laughs> but look. I'd say that's a fair game overtake, but it, punishment was on me. What do they call it? Like karma, because I went down. That is the most pathetic crash ever, but I went down on the second to last corner anyway. So I'd say that is karma for me. But in all honesty, I thought the gap was there. I don't think he was too pleased about it, but it's great fun being back racing cross. Hopefully next time I'll be feeling a bit better and have a bit better legs and maybe I won't have to chop people on the second to last corner and I'll be able to give it some berries in the sprint but it was absolutely wicked fun I can't recommend it enough they're on every Thursday for the next five weeks so jump in join it mountain bike cross bike get down there they're in like the Reading area they're on the British cycling website but it is mega and you will absolutely love it but I hope you've enjoyed this little commentary of me racing and my absolute failure of getting third place I finished fourth in the end I think I was about we we're about 10 seconds behind second place and then it was about 40 seconds behind first place but absolutely wicked just to get the berries for, for 42 minutes and have some fun I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you in the next one